everybody, Willie Boomer here, and boy, are you in for a treat today. Today, I'm going to take you out to the barn with me and let you meet a few of my miniature donkeys. I bet you didn't know Willie raises miniature donkeys. I'm going to let you meet a few of them. One of them in particular is little Manly, and here's a picture of him. He's almost a year old, and he is was little when he was born. He was 18 inches tall. And he's still little to this day. He's about 10 months old and he ain't no big. He's knee high to a bullfrog. He's little, little. But, but you'll get to see him in the video. And I want you to stay tuned because we're going to have a little talk on trigger control a little later. So stay tuned for Willie Boomer. Donkey, but you got your picture on the front of a book. You my boy, huh? Are you my little boy? Yeah, I think you are. I think you love me. You love a Willie, huh? Good gracious. You want me to read this story to you one more time, huh? We'll just read it one more time if you want to. Once upon a time, there was four donkeys, four baby donkeys. There was Fern, Jonesy, Coco, and Manly. And Manly was the littlest donkey of all. Manly was so little when he was born, while he was just knee high to a grasshopper. Ain't that right, Coco? Huh? Ain't that right? All right. As the baby started a playing, they'd all run around the field and they'd kick each other and they'd bray to beat the band. The poor little manly, you remember that manly? You'd just kick behind the little hind legs up in the air, but you was just too little to kick anything. You and when you'd open your little mouth to bray, you'd go eek, eek. Remember that? Huh? But as the days passed by and little Manly kept going every day, it was the same thing. But the other donkeys, they just laughed at Manly. Till one day he was in the middle of the field and he takes off a run. He was as fast as grease lightning. Yes, he was. And he catches up with Fern and he kicks her. Then Jonesy and he kicks Jonesy. And then Coco, and he kicks Coco. Manly runs to the center of the field and he throws his little head back and he lets out the biggest break this side of the Mississippi. Yes, he does. And that's the end of this story. But do you know what the moral of this story is, girls? The moral of the story is practice, practice, practice. And you'll be an ass kicker at whatever you do. Just like Manly. And you know what, Manly? I think I'll just name one of my guns after you. What do you think about that? You like that idea? Oh, Willie will name one of her guns after you, and she'll call it the ass kicker. I think that'd be great. I am so glad you got to meet Willie's little donkeys out at the barn, but now that we're back in in the filming room, I want to talk to you today about trigger control because let me tell you something, trigger control is an ass kicker. It can, I mean, it can really, it's one of your basic fundamentals just like your grip was. And what I'm going to tell you is it takes a lot of practice. I know because I practice all the time. In the last video, we talked about grip. And you might think that you're ready to take your first shots but something I'm going to tell you is that, you know, you really need to practice your grip and your trigger control in dry fire, which means no bullets. Now, today we're going to be using the Glock 19, the Gen 5, and it, it, it is unloaded. We've already checked it ahead of time. So that's what we're going to be using. And something that I want to tell you, you're going to hear so many people talk about where your finger needs to be on that trigger. But I'm a firm believer that it is a personal preference because no two hands are, are the same size. My hands are probably not the same size as yours and yours are not the same size as mine. And I, this is what I think. When you, when you aim that gun, 
This needs to be lined up with your arm right here. And when it does, when your finger hits that trigger, that's going to be the perfect place for you. And that's about where I shoot, right there. So make sure that the gun is in alignment with your arm. And when you put your finger down on that trigger, that's where it'll set. And that's pretty much where I shoot every one of my guns from, is right there. So I had so many people tell me so many different things, but uh, I, I got a good teacher that showed me how to do this, and, and it, it worked out perfect for me. So the, the, but the main thing is that when you, because what that will help you do is where my finger is, I pull the trigger straight back. It goes straight back, and your gun doesn't move. It doesn't pull it from the left to the right, but it just goes straight back. And you want to practice that over and over and over. You want to practice just pulling your trigger straight back. Back. Once you've got your hand lined up, just do it with one hand. Just put your hand out, line it up, pull it back, and pull that trigger straight back. And that'll really help you. You want to squeeze that trigger so easy. When you first learn, you want to squeeze it like a newborn baby's cheeks. You want, I mean, it just wants to be so soft and gentle. Make sure your, your finger's pulling straight back. And because this finger has one purpose only. And it's to, it is to let your gun shoot. That's the only purpose this finger has. Your grip holds it in place. Your sights give you the target. And your finger is, does the most important job. It pulls the trigger. It's the one thing that will make your gun shoot. So now I want you to practice first by taking up the slack in your trigger. That was hard for me too at first. But if you can see my gun right here, I pull it all the way back till you feel it get tight. And that's your slack right there. Now this is on a Glock 19. I pull, pull, pull to right there. And that takes up the slack because if I go any farther, boom. So you see how that does? So I want you to practice next. Once you practice just pulling the trigger, I want you to practice taking up the slack. Now, the next thing that I want you to practice is I want you to practice the reset. Because once you shoot, boom, 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 here, you've got it here. Once you practice that and you shoot, then the reset is there. And you have to know where that's at. You have to figure that where that's at. Because if you don't, you're, as you practice that over and over and over and over, what happens? is it, that it, you will automatically get faster as time goes on. It'll be a lot easier for you. So what you do is pull it back, take the slack out, shoot, and reset. So you want to, each time when you shoot, you want your hand out here. You want to get your, get, keep your finger off the trigger. You're going to, you're, you're outside. You've got bullets in your gun now. You're outside, you got your finger off the trigger, you get your sights lined up, find your target. You put your finger on the trigger, you, sh you pull it back, 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 you shoot. But the gun comes up and it comes down. And then what you got to do is you got to get your sights back on the target again. But that lets you let this, hear that? Let it, let it reset. So all you've got to pull is that distance. You don't have to go from the front to the back. And so you just need to keep practicing this. You need to keep using your trigger, taking the slack up, reset it. And before long, you'll be an ass kicker with great techniques. And you know, it, it's, it's not hard to do. It just does take them a little bit of time to learn. So I want you to be a great ass kicker and learn how to do this and, and practice it every day. And this is Willie Boomer saying, see ya. Love you, and y'all come back now, you hear?